Harvest 22 begins. <laughs> A couple of the tires on this trailer looked a little bit low, so we're gonna check them. Are you ready to go for harvest, Jim? Ready to go. Almost. Is the beans ready? Ah, uh, some of them. There you go. Enough, anyway. <laughs> you guys can probably hear it in my voice that I'm still, I'm still clinging to whatever got me here the last few days, but I'm feeling a lot better. I just don't sound like myself. So Jim's gonna take the grain cart. He's gonna top that off with fuel once Dad gets out of the way. I'm gonna bring this rig down, follow him down to the field. We're gonna head down south about five miles because that's where our drier soybeans are right now. We took these 10 acres off at home yesterday and the stuff north of the house wasn't gonna go. It was 16, 17%. So that's too wet for soybeans. We wanna find stuff that's around that 13 or so. So that's where we are gonna head right now. You think they're gonna go? Uh, this variety is not. From here going this way, uh, it, the ends are different there. But you can cut off there, and I think everything from here is a road of all. Okay. Then there, it looks like there's some different from here. Yeah. But from here east, do you think we'll go? Yeah. They look like they're more ready than anything else. I'm stuck in this jet wash. See, these are the things I do for you guys to make quality content. So between 10 and 14. Yeah. I circled around the block to give him time to open me up a spot so I can unhook the header in the field here, get it out of the way. Not the header, he's got the header, the header trailer. Did you get the scale zeroed? The battery was dead. Oh, on the iPad? Yeah, it was oh. 35% the other day, but we didn't shut it off. Okay. Um, it should have still had some battery left, but that little one maybe goes dead faster than the big one. Yeah, and it might have stayed connected to the cart all night. Oh, sure. I'm gonna give these guys a ride home, and we're gonna grab a couple other pieces, get some trucks down here, and uh, see where, where we're at with the other combine, maybe get the other combine down. There's eye loud on the four-wheeler already. <laughs> I don't remember the last clip or what I said pulling into the yard, but we had a couple changes of plans. We got Jason here from Honey Bee. We are going to unhook this header, and he and I are going to head down with this machine. Dad and Jim took off to pick up a third truck that is down at the truck shop near the fields we're in. Anyway, we, we got it figured out. This header comes with the option to have its own dolly, so it's a two-piece dolly. It doesn't take up 50 feet in your shed. It's just got the back axle part and then the front hitch part. So you can, one guy can get it on and off. Quick side note here, shameless plug for myself while Jason unhooks this header. Right now it's Harvest 22. We're doing 22% off all merchandise. We got leather patch hats, these are cool. All you need is the code HARVEST22 at farmfocus.com. You can only get our actual stuff at Farm Focused or off of our website, mnmillennialfarmer.com. Just make sure you're actually getting it from Farm Focused or else nobody's gonna stand behind it. We even got stuff with the Moline on it. It's all 22% off right now. All right, no more shameless plugs, I promise. They had an inch. There we go. The first voyage in the new to us combine. It's the same model we had before, but it's still exciting. I guess I'll stop and pick up this aimless wanderer. You need a charger, just this part, right? Just that part. Onyx got a, he got a little bit confused a few minutes ago. His mom asked him to empty the dishwasher, but he, he misread that. What he thought she said was go do donuts on the four-wheeler. So he, it was just a, it's a hearing thing. 
I don't know what dad caught, if it was a rock or what, there's kind of a draw going through here, but we got one head down already at the moment. Looks like he's got about 15 acres done here, so I dumped Onyx off to help Jim. Dad actually is gonna run home and go grab some parts because he did it right in the center where the sickle overlaps and there's some different sections there that, that they have like a chamfer on them with an inset screw, so. Dad's gonna go home get some parts. I'll go throw the honeybee on here with Jason and we'll at least get this machine up and going. It's always something, there's always, there's just so many moving pieces once the operation is all flowing. It's just always something, is what it is. Ah, uh, what's that mean? We'll worry about that later. Uh, we'll do that later. Clear? We got clearance, Clarence. It did flash a couple calibration things at me when we hooked it up. One was the reel, but um, everything this, seems to be working. Yeah, fine. on the 780s, there's a tweak still, so we might end up having to run it manually. You're looking pretty good, actually. Yeah, you look at how fast that reel's going. Can you so, turn it down or go to manual? I can, but I don't remember how. After some fiddling around, we've gotten going here, but we did hit a spot where the beans were way too wet, so I pulled out of there. These beans are waist high, and I'm tall, and they are dry top to bottom out here, so these are, these should be good beans. Jason's gonna check a couple settings on the header. I'm gonna see what kind of a job we're doing out the back. Other than where I had to lift up for a big rock here, it is really chewing that residue up nice. Boy, it looks really good behind it, really evenly spread. There's that rock I was trying not to run over. So I'm gonna look and check and see if we're losing any beans out the back, what kind of a job it's doing. There's a couple there. You're never gonna get it completely to zero. There's, uh, there's a few, especially right there. Well, apparently Jason's going harvesting. Might have to close something down a little. Or turn the fan down or something. We're losing. We're losing a we're losing a few more out the back than we should. This machine is new enough. It's got the sensor, so if you get out of the seat when anything's turning, it throws an alarm at you and gets upset. Jason just learned that. We're back up at the trucks for a minute here. Had to come back, grab some tools, make some adjustments to the header. We had one draper belt on this side that was uh, just not tensioned quite right, so Jason's making a quick adjustment here. We'll be back in business. So there's just a simple tensioner right here that uses this as a gauge to kind of show you how far to go. So this detensions the, the actual draper belt itself and then that locks it back in. Pretty simple adjustment, but it was a brand new head that had been sitting for a little bit, so there's gonna be some adjustments to be made. Otherwise, everything's going good. You guys will notice this big pan here. There's a heck of a ramp going up there. When you set it on the ground, this comes all the way up and is flat. So this will drop down to contour with the ground, and you can adjust how rigid or how non-rigid this is using a display in the cab. It actually uses air pressure to make that more or less rigid for whatever settings you want. We're good? Hope so. All right. <laughs> we got a little bit more off, headers working good. Figured we'd jump out and see if the new settings cleaned it up a little bit here. I didn't change a lot. No, doesn't seem to me like it did anything. Well, maybe I just gotta drive faster. Cause they're up here too. I think that's the deal. I think where they're dry, they're so brittle and dry, they're just snapping, they're shattering. It's like 80% of them, 70, 80% of them are way too dry. And then we got that 20 to 30% that's too wet yet. I think they're just so dry, we gotta drive faster, they're shattering. Yeah, reel all the way back. 
Yeah. Bring it all the way back, so I just keep it when I have some hand and bring it in, nothing touches the Yeah. Um, oh, you're in from that outside, so it's making it higher right there. That definitely helped. I was going to check in here. Sometimes the beans will get so dry that even just the wind will start to bust them open. That's not the case here, though. They're just, they're at that edge. Now, there are a couple on the ground out here, but there are some. We've cut through the center of the field on an angle now, so Jason is out kind of checking between the two heads from the John Deere to this head. And I'm running four and a half, five miles per hour here. Kick it back up. Know. Does a better job at five well, miles per hour. We got 45 feet. And the taller beans where the better spots are, the ground is definitely cleaner. They're able to feed in better. It does make a difference. Our sample's got a few sticks and some dry pot in there. But that's overall, that's pretty good. I'd rather have that than beans on the ground. We got Onyx in the grain cart. Hopefully he's around a bunch this fall. And Jason out there, he's going for the shot. He's gonna do it. There, he lived. I turned the camera off just in case he wasn't going to make it. There he goes. He's got enough to go fill a truck and then Jim will take it to town. We've been kicking around the idea of giving Onyx a camera just to have a little Onyx cam go in this harvest. Let me know what you guys think. You want to see an Onyx cam? I don't think... We're talking like a minute or two each video, but I think it'd be cool to get his perspective on the days that he's around. Right here, I'm driving five and a half, I was going five and a half, five and a half miles per hour with a 45 foot head in tall beans. They're not yielding outstanding, but they're tall. There's a lot of plant here. They're about 47, 48 on the yield. I'm gonna get out and inspect what kind of a job it's doing here after pushing these through like this. Oh yeah, I know. So you turn it off, but even though pieces are still spinning, it's going to alarm at me and tell me I shouldn't do this. See? I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. That's the combine honking. Luckily it quits when everything stops rotating. This looks actually really good. Much better. No, there's more over here. But it's just, I don't know that there's anything I can do about it. Make sure it's not worse back here. The machine seems to be doing a good job. It's just that shelling at the head. We made some tweaks. I'm gonna go just a little bit here and jump out again. We'll see how everything is doing now. Still doing it? So I found there's a sensor. There's a sensor on each side of the back of the cleaning area right in front of the chopper. And this is what's happening. And that's not good. I, I'd rather have these beans in my tank. It's only doing it on the strip where the sensor's letting it out. The rest of it looks pretty clean, but it's right where that sensor is. The rest of it's pretty, pretty good. Jason also made some changes to the header, and that looks a lot better now. So, you said you changed the pitch of the fingers? Pitch of the fingers on the side, you change that down crop, you put it all the way up to five, it'll reach out and pick up. Okay. I'm doing good crop like this, and it's dry. To put it on the one and it's more it doesn't touch out in front before the combine that's just closer so it doesn't touch anything until it's coming over the nine farther in it's definitely considerably better we slowed the rotor way down i slowed my driving down i was going about five and a half now i'm going four and a half and we got a lot less loss at the header now that we changed the angle of the uh, reel of those fingers on the reel so Jason's gonna run over and see what dad's machine is doing compared to this one and kind of let me know how we're looking compared to that machine. More on that side. So he's got more, but I think his tank is cleaner. I'm getting a lot more sticks and dry pods in the tank now, and I think his is a lot cleaner, but he's getting more on the ground. I would 
figure we end up with one dumb little eight foot strip between the two of us. Okay, I sped the fan way up. Now we have a much cleaner tank. I made multiple adjustments, got the tank a lot cleaner. But now let's go see and make sure I'm not pushing any onto the ground. Definitely better. There's still spots where we're losing at the head. There's sometimes just not much you can do about that when the beans are dry, but definitely way, way better in the tank now. This is still from the old settings, what you see in the window. Okay. You have Jason's number. I told him he's gonna follow me to the other side. But maybe we'll stay here. My moisture's been from 10 and a half to 12 over here on this stretch, but I'm definitely getting a lot more, there's more green pods mixed in with it, so I'm getting more green pod in the tank. We're on a different variety now, just different part of the field. There we go. Now we got some soybeans coming in there. And they're dry. We got three different varieties right here, so. Everything going this way for quite a ways is gonna be pretty dry. This is a mile long field, and I ended up meandering down towards the other end of it, so I kind of got off on my own, took out some endros. Now I'm full, so I'm waiting a minute for onyx. Getting kind of dark in the west. I don't like that. Okay, well, I'm gonna close my hoppers here right now, but Jason, well, Jason's right here. Yeah, so he can take you and you can turn the other truck. The right. The other truck to the north, on the north end, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Roddick's got a really full in the back and the front's not very full, cool, but I think it can go in. Okay. okay. We'll, we'll take a look at it here and then we'll head, I'll just park off to the side for now. Looking too promising. No, it doesn't look good, but I don't think it's going to last for very long. We're getting a steady light sprinkle now. What time does yours say it's supposed to end at? I don't, I don't even know how to look that I up. I think it says right down there. Like 6.30. So that's two hours, hour and a half? Yeah, this is mine. But it's all green. It's all green, so it's all light. But Let's hope they set up the trap to take rain and have watered it all day. But He's worried about the go-kart trap. We gotta go go kart. Uh, Should so, we take them with go kart? You hop in that. You hop in that. Okay. And I gotta get this out of the way because Grandpa's gonna come dump right now, okay? Oh. And then Jason's gotta take us back so I can tarp a truck. It's a consistent rain at this point. We're beyond a sprinkle. We got water dripping off the roofs. Oh, Dad quit. He's out. He's gonna hurry up, dump, so that we can tarp that cart, get to the north end, and tarp that truck. Which means I gotta go here. I would say this is gonna end the evening, huh? Yeah. Unless you got a field four miles that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That would go for a little bit yet. Yeah, didn't get enough rain in August, but now we get the rain. That figures. It'll even out the beans. Some are too dry. And even along this edge, there was a lot of wet spots. That's why I didn't go up. Yeah, it was weird. There's a lot of green pods coming through in certain spots. That's why I turned around where I did. Oh, we're back home. Jason's gonna take off here. And look at that. The cat's caught a mouse and wanted to show it off to us. Did you catch a mouse and not eat it? Well, it's still a good kitty. So we are actually going racing. It's, it's our home track. Onyx's home go-kart track has got their biggest race of the year tonight. It's a terrible time of the year for us because we farm, but in case of something like this would happen, it's only 20 miles away and we had the cart all ready to go and loaded up, so we just hooked to the trailer. We're gonna grab the girls here and Onyx is gonna go run his last race of the year since we can't be harvesting anyway. Did your brother run away already? Nope. Yeah. Yep. Well, the rain came. No. The rain delay. The track is burned in. Are you ready? I don't know. It's gonna be a long, dark, cold night. Um, don't let us down. I can't hear you. I have old ears and there are engines. I, I... All right, you went seventh to first in your heat race. 
You starting on the poll for the feature? Yeah. You've done half your job. You ready? Yep. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs>